It never ends. <laughs> We're in Budapest today. Our trip is coming to an end, but for trying Hungarian food, it's just starting. We woke up at 5 a.m. today to go see the sunrise, and then we came back to our apartment, and then we slept for another two hours. <laughs> and now it's probably 10 a.m., and we haven't done anything. Apart from that, now I'm just waiting for Dan to get ready so we can go have breakfast. Release your inner Shakira. No. <laughs> Give me a, a lore, lore, lore. No. Yes. <laughs> After our zoomies wore off, we went on to have breakfast at a Hungarian pastry shop. I found this one hiding above a convenience store and it had all the cakes we wanted to try. We probably got a bit carried away, but we ordered four slices so that we could try as many as possible. The first one was a layered cake made with pureed chestnuts and whipped cream. And I'm not even a big fan of chestnuts and I really liked it. Although you'll see Hungarians really like their whipped cream to good measure. Case in point, the second cake, whose name literally means creamy. It's literally a cube of pastry cream between two layers of puff pastry. <laughs> The third cake, giving us a break from the cream, is made of alternated sponge cake and chocolate buttercream layers with a hard caramel layer on top. At this point, this is the face of someone who just realized we may have, in fact, ordered a little bit too much cake. Anyway, last slice to taste. This is a traditional cake from the city of Budapest itself. It's traditionally made of layers of almond and vanilla buttercream spiked with cognac. Though this one we had was made with walnuts instead and the typical fondant and chocolate topping that you normally see in the French Napoleon pastries. Who gets the walnuts? Yeah. I get the walnuts. Mm -hmm. They're so nice. <laughs> we split the walnut. Thank you, Abby. Very happy with a tiny full of cake. Now, let me tell you that this day could have easily been a culinary disaster. <laughs> for this trip, we failed a bit on our planning, so we were scrambling a little to find a restaurant for lunch. We ended up finding one which seemed okay, and we decided to give it a try. Their combined menu with a few Hungarian options started with a traditional chicken soup, but we were a bit confused when this bowl arrived, because, at least in our books, this didn't look like any chicken we recognized. They didn't tell us that it was a different soup, so it took us a while to figure out that Dan was actually served a matzo ball soup, which is a traditional Jewish dish. I just wish poor Dan had been able to appreciate the actual dish that he was eating, knowing that it was a bread dumpling, instead of thinking that it was a weird ball of ground chicken. Anyway, the main dishes though were much better and didn't disappoint. Dan went for the iconic chicken paprikash, I hope I'm saying that right, because Hungary is paprikash. Land. And I went for the traditional vegetarian version of the dish, which is made with mushrooms. This was also when I was introduced to the Hungarian dumplings that they serve with these dishes. We went to a grocery store and in Hungary they have so many differently different types of pasta. <laughs> I was amazed and I just wanted to bring them all home with me. For dessert, another traditional Budapest dish, Hungarian trifle. It's made with custard, sponge cake, whipped cream and raisins soaked in rum or in Hungarian dessert wine. It's super tasty. It's good, but it's got something in there. I haven't heard that. It's like moist. Moist. Moisty. I like it. Let's keep like that.
guess what? For dinner, we also didn't have a planned spot to go to, so we ended up wandering around and just going into the first spot that served goulash. But we quickly realized that it probably wasn't the best choice because if you remember the goulash that Dan had in Bratislava in my previous video, this liquid consistency didn't seem right. So we were determined to find a good goulash spot for the next day. Anyway, I tried langos, the classic Hungarian snack which is deep fried. I had the simple one with the sour cream and grated cheese and it was so good. Probably a great hangover food, no doubt, for which I wasn't sure if I should eat with a knife and fork or not, so I insisted in going hands first. Like a Is it? <laughs> that should be nice. Or without the sugar. Obviously. If you're not sure, what I'm comparing it with is these kinds of foods that are normally served in fun fairs back in Portugal, but I know in also other European countries, but without the sugar, obviously. But the base, though, is very similar and it goes well with the savory toppings. The next day we were packed, swimsuit in hand, to go to the thermal baths. But first, a stop at the grocery store for some breakfast snacks. First, starting with a donut. If you watched my last video, you're probably noticing that just across the border, donuts have a different name, and even the dough is slightly different. This one had peach filling, which is fitting because Budapest is also known for its peaches. Next up, the savory baked pastry, which it's normally eaten as a snack on its own or with wine and cheese. And then a different bread roll. like a baguette in a differently different shape. <laughs> it would probably be better eaten with something in it, but as we were in a rush, it's, it's still good to try bread in different shapes every now and then. Well, after a relaxing morning, soaking up like a pair of old raisins, today we were much better prepared in terms of food spots to tackle for the rest of our food list. The main priority was for Dan to try a good goulash, so I got some proper recommendations and there we went. Ah, now you see a bit of a difference. If you watched my last video, you see that there's still a bit of a difference from the Slovak goulash, and I think that that's what's special about trying different cuisines. It's each country has its own take on it. It's better. Much better. <laughs> I wanted to try the Hungarian fish soup and the waiter apparently was from a part of Hungary where the version of this soup is typical, so he recommended that I have the catfish version, so that's what I went for. After that I wasn't so hungry because I literally ate all the bread they put on the table. <laughs> but then went for the main dish, this time trying the savory pancake dish. Pancakes stuffed with stewed meat, topped with paprika, obviously, and sour cream. After sightseeing all afternoon, we made an evening stop at a particular stand that we had walked by a few times and which smelled so delicious that we came here on purpose to get our very first chimney cake. It never ends! <laughs> mm. Good! It smells really good! I don't know how to describe the feeling of walking at night in Budapest while eating a chimney cake, but it's a therapy dupe for sure. Mm. 
And then for dinner, we found this restaurant which was highly recommended. It's clearly geared for tourists, but this ended up being the best place we ate in in Budapest. The waitresses were the nicest people. First, they gave us a starter with, you guessed it, paprika. <laughs> And then then ordered Hungary's national stew. And look, there are those little dumplings again. Because of the name, we wrongly thought that it was made with pork, but it can actually be made with beef, lamb, pork, or chicken. I, on the other hand, had what was probably the best pea soup I've ever tried in my entire life. Good soup. <laughs> And I don't even like peas that much. There's a good one. Also, there's the dumplings. Then, for dessert, another Budapest typical pancakes, similar to French crepes with filling. Half of ours had plum jam filling, while the other half was filled with peach jam. So, it's like a crepe, <laughs> but it has the jam inside. Maybe, yeah. It's playing Game of Thrones in the xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, we couldn't leave Hungary without a little alcohol. We shared the shot of peach palenka, a fruit brandy. Hey, <laughs> Proud that this time I didn't nearly die, although this is still 40% alcohol. And that was the sweet ending of our silly little Central European trip. You'll definitely see me back with another one of these vlogs soon. Follow me on Instagram or TikTok if you like food and travel content, or join me here on YouTube for future vlogs and discussions around nutrition and body image. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye!